Okay, what we've got here today is a 2002 Volkswagen Jetta 1.8, and um, it's making a lot of rattling noise. A uh, customer complaining uh, said he stopped somewhere, and they told him it was the turbo unit. Um, not sure what it is. Uh, I don't usually just start replacing stuff because somebody said it was wrong. Obviously, I got to diagnose it and see what the rattle is. Uh, first of all, when it was dropped off at the tow truck, it was bone dry on oil. So I recommend if you have any problems with your car, check the oil uh, and your fluids. That's kind of a basic maintenance. You probably do that every couple of weeks or a month, at least once a month, uh, just to check and see if you're losing any vitals. Um, if you uh, if you have a leak that you know of, then you know you got to check it every couple of weeks because cars just don't run well without oil. I had a, a Cadillac CTS come to me, uh, random misfires. It was diagnosed by two or three other mechanics, and they said it was all the misfiring. The coil packs are misfiring and randomly misfiring and, you know, thousands of dollars to replace. And he brought it to me and uh, for a second opinion, and, of course, <laughs> The first thing I did was open the hood and, and check the oil, and it wasn't a, a drop of oil in it. Uh, sorry I seem to be yammering on, but this is educational stuff you need to know. Uh, so the oil, bone dry, so I picked up some oil for the thing, which wasn't cheap. Um, filled it full of oil, and the thing ran like a top, still running good today. He picked it up, and he goes, wow, it hasn't run this good since it was new, and I told him you need to check your oil once in a while. Um, apparently he's got a small leak because uh, I seen it dripping a little in my shop there but uh, anyway that's a whole nother car but just just to an example this car here the same thing I dropped off on with a tow truck and I pushed it into the driveway and uh, and lo and behold not a drop of oil in it unfortunately the damage that's done is done because uh, whatever was out of oil I mean it's highly likely it could be the uh, the um, um, uh, turbocharger, seeing how it's uh, oil lubricated, it's got an inlet oil line and, a, and an outlet that helps lubricate it, and um, and um, so it's possible that that's what could be rattling away. Something else. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, to diagnose this is I'm going to remove the serpentine belt that runs the components on the front of the engine and see if the rattle still exists. If it does, then I know it's something internal, uh, turbocharger, that'll probably be uh, one of the things I check, but I'm gonna start by pulling the serpentine belt off. If that doesn't do it, then I'm gonna have to start. He wants a timing chain done. I recommended that months ago, and so we're gonna do the, uh, excuse me, timing belt on this one. Uh, this one. Uh, we're gonna do the timing belt and that's what this video is basically going to be on. It's going to be diagnosing what the problem is and replacement of the timing belt. Maybe I'll just split that in. Yeah, I'm going to split that in two videos. First, the diagnostic video, and then uh, I'll follow up with another video of the actual replacement of the belt. belt. Uh, so anyway, I'll be right back. You can see I'm pretty much set up here. I'm going to start the car and, uh, and uh, uh, see what it sounds like and see if I can kind of hear some stuff and then I'll remove the belt. So, be right back. Yeah, imagine it, uh, you can hear that kind of a flack. I'm going to see if I can listen to probe around and listen to where the sound's coming from. I don't have your handy dandy stethoscope, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the old pry bar. And I'm going to put it up against the, uh, oh look, the noise went away. You hear that? It almost sounds like something that's vacuum, it almost sounds like one of those vacuum activated flaps. I'm going to have to research to see if it's got one, but you put that there and then you put your ear up to this end and it works.
you know, it's uh, it's really much quieter now. It's got a little clack from the lifters, but uh, maybe the oil I put in it's doing its thing now. Because uh, I put in the oil and then I ran it for a little bit. It was clacking just like you heard it at the beginning of this uh, when I first started it up, but uh, it seems to uh, have went away. Let me rev it up a little and see if it comes out. Well, dad gum, dad gum, dad gum. The clacking went away. How can I find it if it's not doing it? Wait a minute, it's starting to clack a little bit again. Wow, you hear that? It just started clacking again. Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to tear into it a little deeper. It almost sounds like a loose bracket flopping around. Anyway, I'm going to have to... I'll be right back. I'm going to cut this off and uh, come back in in a minute. Probably have to jack it up. Take a look underneath, see what I see. Yeah, get this car jacked up now. And, uh... There's the turbo unit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up there. Yeah. Man, what a what a mess. We got an exhaust leak right right there where the white is at. I don't know if you can see that so well. Let me get, let me get a better angle. See how the exhaust uh, is actually the turbo unit there. See the white around that. white speck right there that's that's what you call an exhaust leak that white stuff coming out around the sides uh, so it looks like we got a drop of oil there but that doesn't really look like the main oil leak but it could be it looks pretty wet right there but uh, okay I'm gonna start this up and and see if uh, this is what's doing the rattling Okay, well, like I was saying, uh, I'm not buying the, the fact that this thing uh, is the turbo unit yet because I'm right there on the turbo and I got my screwdriver up against it and up against my ear and it's quiet. And I heard most of the rattling coming from the front up here, so with the serpentine belt disconnected, that disconnected all the cogs and wheels up here that, will, that are turning as far as the tensioner and pulleys and and the uh, bearings on the power steering pump and the alternator so it's not none of that stuff so the noise seems to be coming from inside the timing cover so uh, we're, we're doing a timing belt on this anyway so I'm thinking that's where the noise is so uh, I'll let you know on the next the, the turbo unit is back here connected to the exhaust it's got oil oil lines running to it got uh, coolant lines running to it uh, and um, it's this whole unit and the big cast iron thing that I showed you a view of a little earlier and stuff well all that's not making any noise when I put the screwdriver up there it sounds smooth no clankety clank now, of course uh, I hear it a lot up in this this cover but it's hard to tell with the plastic cover because it sounds totally different but more than likely our problem is going to be right inside that timing cover and it's definitely uh, you definitely want to get your timing belts changed on 
things that what they call a no tolerance engine no tolerance means there's no clearance for the valve to open and be out of time when the piston is up because if the piston comes all the way up and the valve is open at the wrong time because your belt broke or it skipped a tooth uh, you can cause really severe damage to your engine uh, you can bend the valves crack a head break a piston it's just it's just an ugly situation when that happens you're talking lots of money so the best thing to do is is you know get your timing belt replaced at the scheduled maintenance uh, interval because if you don't you'll be sorry I mean unless you're one of those that drives a car for a year buys a brand new drives it for a year or two and and then just leasing it well then by all means but I think if you're leasing the car you're supposed to I don't know about the schedule maintenance on that they have to check that out before you get into it but in any case if you own one and you're keeping it for more than a hundred thousand miles uh, most cars are required to change that belt within somewhere between 65 and 85,000 miles is on the average so anyway uh, thanks for watching